Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now at first glance this looks like an ordinary Ryzen 5 1600 processor. After all that's what's printed on the top and that's what shows up in Task Manager and CPU Z. But look a little closer. This Ryzen 5 1600 6 core CPU is actually an 8 core CPU. Not only that but it's an 8 core CPU with 16 threads. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the individual by the name of Johnny who sent this over for us to look at today because I never knew these existed. According to a few old articles I found, this CPU would have been part of a batch manufactured at a specific time in a specific place. It wasn't just 1600s that left the factory unlocked so to speak, but some 1600Xs did too. Aside from the extra cores, the other specs remain the same with the clock and all core boost speeds unchanged. As for why this happened, well I don't think there is a definitive answer even half a decade later. Some say it was a simple mistake, which seems incredibly unlikely, and others suggest a marketing stunt. The most plausible reason, which unfortunately is always the most boring, is that AMD used some of its less purchased 8 core dies to fulfil a stock shortfall. In other words, to meet the demand. As a side note, the manufacturing date means that this is an 8 core version of the original 1600, not the later AF variant, which was based on the 12 nanometer architecture and was basically a slightly slower 2600. As far as I know, there are no 8 core versions of the new and improved part. With all that said, do the two extra cores make a difference? Well, when it comes to productivity, absolutely. Rendering a 1 minute 1080p 60fps 40,000 KBS video took just 53 seconds with the 8 core Ryzen 1600, whereas the same task took 64 seconds with the standard chip. It's clear that the extra cores are being utilised and this was also apparent when enabling the individual core and thread monitor in MSI Afterburner. For example, one of the most CPU intensive titles in my collection, Starfield, seemed to make full use of everything on offer, which in combination with the DaVinci Resolve result, confirms that the extra cores aren't just sitting there underutilised. But are things actually improved in gaming? Does an 8 core Ryzen 5 1600 make much difference? Well let's look at some gameplay footage and talk about the comparative results. We'll continue with Starfield which is where we saw the biggest frame rate improvements. The gameplay is of course from the 8 core 1600 itself paired with a 4070 Super to ensure that we are squeezing the most out of this processor. I've left it at stock speeds as well. Starfield is far from perfect in terms of performance on an aging first gen Ryzen, especially when we are wandering around busier districts and settlements. Aquila here for example will really take its toll on the processor with spikes and frame drops all over the place. That said, when we look at the figures it's clear that this 8 core silicon lottery winner is doing a lot better than its traditional 6 core counterpart in terms of the average and the percentile lows. When we look at Cyberpunk 2077's figures, the 8 core Ryzen 5 came out on top once again, though the margins weren't as large as before. That said, it's the improvement to the percentile figures that are essentially more important here, as we are getting a more consistent experience with the 8 core. The experience isn't perfect and the older architecture will struggle anyway, especially in the most modern and demanding games, but it's nice to see an improvement. The thing is, finding one of these is probably very difficult, maybe impossible, and if you wanted to spend Ryzen 1600 money in 2023, which, sorry, 2024, which isn't all that much, but wanted better performance, then the AF variant will offer up a nice performance boost, and probably do a little bit better than this older 8 core, despite still having just 6 cores. I've included Kingdom Come Deliverance because it's a pretty CPU intensive title, yet here we're not seeing much difference at all between the results. There's a slight difference with the average, but without software to monitor the frame rates, we can't really feel these differences in gameplay. It feels equally as acceptable with both chips, to be honest, and there will still be issues here and there, especially in busier areas. The same can be said for The Witcher 3 most of the time, though the 8 core Ryzen does actually do a little better in busier areas where the 0.1% low represents increased consistency. 
This is actually a really welcome improvement despite not looking like a really significant difference on paper. Now don't get me wrong, the performance drops are still noticeable and going from at least 70 FPS to 50 all of a sudden can definitely be felt. The Ryzen 5 1600 is certainly showing its age, whether you have the regular version or you have found yourself one of these rare 8 cores. I say rare but I'm not exactly sure how many are out there. But let me know if you have one hiding away somewhere or maybe it's still inside your main system. Finally we have Grand Theft Auto 5. I'm running this one with the maximum settings and all of the advanced options turned on. MSAA was however off but that's a far more GPU intensive setting anyway. Our 8 core Ryzen scored a very nice 69 FPS with OK percentile lows. Again, the figures were a bit better than the traditional 6 core 1600, but nothing major to write home about here. I mean, if I got one of these a few years ago and I wasn't expecting it, it would have been a very nice surprise. And if you like to edit and render videos, for example, well, even better. This is where the mystery 8 core 1600 still stands out most of the time over its counterpart, and I'm sure there are probably more games out there which will exhibit some really nice differences too. Starfield, which is a really CPU dependent title, loved the two extra physical cores, and even though the differences aren't always significant, they will be there. As cool as this thing is, I can't really end the video by saying you should buy one or look for one because you probably won't be able to find one. I will instead say that buying a Ryzen 5 1600 AF is probably the next best thing, or the 2600, despite the 6 cores. First gen Ryzen 1700s are quite cheap as well, which is basically what this is, but under a different name. I'd still recommend looking at second gen or above though, if you want to build a PC on the AM4 platform. Overall, this is certainly an interesting find, and I can only imagine how excited owners of these would have been after firing up their new PC build for the first time back in 2017. Paying for a Ryzen 5 and getting what is essentially a Ryzen 7 must have been a very nice feeling, especially with the money saved. I want to end the video by saying a big thanks to all of you for watching, to Johnny for sending this in, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.